if we talk about journalists, uh, you know, a lot has been written about DOA over the years. Um, the one guy I, I really uh, look up to, at, partly because of his writing, but uh, mostly because that he helped, uh, he helped us and he helped a lot of people around Vancouver, musicians, who, you know, is Tom Harrison, you know, from the Georgia Strait and later the province that, uh, you know, <clears throat> he would take somebody's record and uh, if he thought it was good, he would try and help him out and get some, you know, inordinate amount of press that you compared to your sales. He would like really pump it up. You had a lot of leeway at that straight and used to have a lot at the province to do that. When I started at the paper in 79, uh, I was kind of like the new kid on the block. I was a fair haired boy. And a lot of the changes that were happening at that time, you know, um, the paper really didn't understand. And so they looked upon me to be a kind of a conduit. Um, I would take the information that I had and I would make it understandable to the reader at large. As it turns out, I think I came along at the right time. And uh, in that, the music scene was starting to grow and starting to change. And lo and behold, I was right there with it. And so, um, as it grew, I grew, and as it changed, I changed, and I saw, you know, how, you know, the club industry, for instance, uh, was kind of oppressive and it needed needed uh, a shake up, and uh, sure, sure enough, the Long the Punks and did did do the shake up, and I was there to report upon it, and uh, I really enjoyed that. I mean, there, I don't think. You know, with rock and roll having been around as long as it has been now, uh, there has been a, a time since in which there was a, a real us versus them kind of uh, feeling. At that point, you know, the, the people, the agents and the bands and stuff like that had fought long and hard to gain control. And now they had control, but they only had it for a few years and they weren't going to give it up. And that was oppressive. I mean, if you were a musician, you probably could get the experience you needed by playing the clubs, but at the same time, you weren't encouraged to be creative. You weren't encouraged to do, do it yourself. And along came the whole punk ethos of doing it yourself. And suddenly, there was this whole other way of doing things. I mean, you could dress, look, d perform, do what you want. And, uh, and that was really inspiring to a lot of people. But the thing about Tom, if you did a subsequent record that maybe wasn't as good, and but he still have, felt it had some redeeming value, he would find a way to go like, okay, this isn't the A product, but you know what? There's some really outstanding stuff here. And like, he and he, he just helped like a lot of people. He's like a, a great uh, journalist in my mind, right? You know, you know. And also at the same time, he would take apart a lot of the mainstream acts like savagely, you know, and give them what they had coming, right? Initially, there's this real feeling uh, that uh, all these gigs had to be supported. I mean, there was kind of a, a show of solidarity among a lot of the fans of this kind of music. So, I mean, whenever there was a, a gig planned at one of these halls and stuff like that, you know, people would show up and just and sometimes not even because they like the music but because they want to support the scene but at the same time it made a lot of people in, who were quote the establishment uh, defensive and so there was a real opposition to what a lot of the uh, new ideas and new attitudes were.